Hey, what's going on, guys? Alex with NBC 11 Alive. Team 1-1, born to compete. I got that guy in front of me, man. We're talking about a straight dude, man. About 6'2", and he will change your life at the line of scrimmage. Like, if they were going to you before pre-snap, once chaos happens and the ball snap, it's just over. Call it back going a different way, man. You messed my stats up, man. Pastor Tane, what's going on with you, man? How you doing? Glad to be a part of the show, man. Yo, man, life's good for me, man. How's it going out there? You're, you're in Arizona right now. It's hot. It's, it's muggy. You putting in work. What's that day like for you preparing for the in, biggest interview of your life? Uh, I like it. You know, I'm getting prepared well. You know, I'm getting faster and stronger in the weight room. I'm getting faster on the field. And also, you know, Arizona, I, it's a different little scenery of things. You know, I'm from Florida. You know, I never seen mountains like that before, but uh, it's a little, <laughs> it's a little different. You know, I just like the vibes out here. It's pretty cool. All right, as a high school player, you had a lot of hype around you. All American. Everybody's talking about how good you were. All that kind of stuff. Then you go into the champions locker room, Alabama. We ain't talking about no other locker room. We ain't talking. To, I don't want to name names, but y'all all, y'all know what I'm talking about. We ain't talking about somewhere you go where the expectation is low. We're talking about somewhere where the standard is high. The standard is set on championship. The standard is set on you playing at the best of your ability. What was it like going into that locker room with all the hype you had around you and still producing? Uh, you know, you just gotta live up to it. You know, coming from high school, I came from a winning culture. And I was like, why not join and be a part of another winning uh, organization? And, um, you know, when I went to Alabama, I had my head held high. You know, I just put my head down and work. And, you know, you had to, you know, at Alabama, you got the same amount of talent around you. So, you know, you gotta compete and work for it. And, you know, I'm just, honestly, I'm just thankful to be a part of such a prestigious program and learn a lot of things from there. And, you know, that was probably some of the best days of my life, you know, being at that school and just learning and growing each and every day. Going back to high school, you talked about a winning program. You played for your dad out there, Pat Sertain, you're the same namesake, uh, namesake obviously. Uh, he was a good ball player, man. He got he, he had some good days on that football field. Yeah. What were you able to learn from him, put in your game and kind of move forward with? Uh, so I sort of talked to him about different techniques and stuff that he see I can improve on in my game. You know, it's just like going back and forward and, you know, just um, hearing him talk, you know, helps improve my game a lot. And we also uh, get a lot of work in, in the off season whenever I'm back at home, uh, you know, going through, through different uh, DB drills and also going through a lot of film study with him. Um, like I said before, he looks at things and see things I can improve on. And, you know, we work and craft that out every day. You got the honors list, so to speak, of who's who or whatever, all the awards you can get in the SEC playing at a high level. You're a national champion, SEC champion, defensive player of the year in the SEC coming out of the secondary, which is like unreal hard to do. Now you're about to go to the NFL. What is your expectation taking that next step? The expectation still stays the same. Like I was a um, senior in high school transitioning into a freshman college. You know, it's another step in the journey. Um, you even got to work harder, you know, and correct the little things because the slight, slightly little things you mess up, you know, you don't never know what it could happen to you in the league because there's a next level step and you know it's even better players and more tempo um and even i should say the game evolves so differently now where it's like you gotta be on your p's and q's each and every snap you know so i just feel like i'm excited for the next level and i just can't wait to see where it takes me now everybody says coach saban is a very serious guy now you would be somebody that would know, right? I mean, you, he's in the second. Are you? He coaches in the secondary. That's his thing, right? You know. Yeah. So you're with him every single day, every meeting. Maybe when you have lunch, you're hanging out with each other. He might send you a text. You know, hey, what's uh, going on? What was it like with Coach Saban? Oh, uh, it was fun, man. People think he's serious, but he like he jokes around too. Now he say some jokes here and there, but um, just being there with Coach Saban, just getting picking his brains, you know, because he's been in the game for the longest, you know, probably for longer than any coach for football. You know, just getting to learn from him, being in the meeting every day, it was such a, you know, great feeling. And he, as him being the head coach, coaching you as a, damn near as a position coach, 
you know, being with the DBs majority of the time, you know, I should say just being able to get gain knowledge and being able to learn from him and being being able for him to teach you each and every day, you know, you just can't take that for granted. You know, I'm curious, man. You know, we, we all reach another level in our lives, whatever it might be. Uh, but you're about to reach another level very soon. And you'll, you'll be able to do some pretty cool things with that, man. Uh, I heard traveling is one of the things that you want to do. Uh, where would you like to go? Oh, I've been wanting to go out the country. I wanted to uh, kick my feet up by a beach. Okay. See some trees, see some yeah. views, everything. I, I always wanted to go to Dubai. Okay. You know, Expensive trip, a little expensive trip. Um, <laughs> Italy, uh -huh. uh, Bora Bora, mm. uh, Cancun, mm. you know, those stuff I got on my bucket list, you know, on my high travel list. <laughs> so while everybody's doing everything else with their money, you know what I'm saying, when that time comes, you say the first thing you're doing is hopping on a flight. When it's time, obviously COVID safe, we get all that guy. Yeah, when yeah. It's time, when it's time, and uh, go ahead and enjoy yourself, put your toes in the sand, huh? Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Any shouts or anything you want to give before we close on out? Uh, nah, man. You know, I just want to say thank you for having me on the show again. Um, and, you know, just the train keeps rolling. You know, I'm just going to keep working. That is my guy, man. Pastor Tane Jr., man. One of the best in the country. And obviously, you know it's true because, hey, the lead talking about taking him. Let me tell you something. When he get there, he come to play ball. I'm, I, that's all I'm going to say. That's I'm going to put it. I ain't going to put no expectation. Nothing like that. All I'm going to say is, he gonna show up. We gonna come to play ball, man. Either way, guys, make sure you catch us. NBC 11 Alive, Team 1-1 with Jeff Hullers and the crew. And of course, Maria and Alex Glaze and all those guys. And of course, us, the number one segment in the country. Born to compete. Take care, guys. <laughs>